Hello and welcome to another edition of the Movie Kit Podcast. It's been a little bit of time here, so happy to be back. I'm your host, Kit Bowen. We've got a good show today. We're going to talk about the latest or the, the, the next Joker installation from Todd Phillips. And joining me in this conversation is my very good friend, Joel Amos. Joel, how are you doing today? Very, very good. Thank you very much. So it is Joker... Foléadou, I think Foléadou, which actually is an interesting title because everyone thinks it's just, it's basically they think it's saying part two, but apparently the French translation of Foléadou is uh, two people who suffer from mental illness, basically, or like mm-hmm. insanity or something. So, which is actually very apropos for this film. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You have two people who have serious mental health issues. Um, let me read the description here real quick. Arthur Flack uh, is institutionalized at Arkham, awaiting trial for his crimes as Joker. While struggling with his dual identity, author not, Arthur not only stumbles upon her love, but also finds the music that's always been inside him. It is directed once again by Todd Phillips and uh, also co-written by him as well. And starts walking Phoenix once again as Joker Arthur Fleck. And also we've got Lady Gaga as Lee Quinzel, a.k.a. Harley Quinzel. <laughs> That's kind of her full name. Uh, we also have Brendan Gleeson, Catherine Keener, Steve Coogan, uh, and others as well. And I'm going to let you start us off with this. How, what, how did you think of Joker for la du- for la du- um- I, I am going to start by quoting a very famous line from Joaquin Phoenix, the star of this film, from his movie <laughs> Gladiator, when he looked at his sister in the film and said, I am terribly vexed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am terribly vexed because I, I thought like literally all night, like I thought I'd get home and like chill and maybe watch the news or whatever. But I just like sat around and just thought about this movie, which should say a lot about the movie. But at the same time, I would just, I mean, in a nutshell, I think, I think it's, it's, it's kind of horrible. But yeah. at the same time, there are moments of genius yes. in it. And it is the weirdest dichotomy. And it's I like, agree. I mean, I, I know a lot of people loved the first movie. I did. Um, absolutely loved it. I think there's something about this character and frankly, everybody that seems to play him just takes it to another level. Right. And of course, Oscar notices, and you know, this is a sequel to an Oscar winning film. And like, you just, it's also the thing is it's, it's a very different film. I mean, this is like a love story courtroom drama, like I don't and think prison ever, drama. We, right. We don't, we don't get out of the courtroom or our prison. Right. And, you know, the last movie was Joker in all these different locations, and it just felt kind of like, I don't know, claustrophobic. It just seemed like you wanted more, like, from the outside world. And uh, it was a very, very different feel than the first movie. So those that loved it for what the first movie was is very different. And also the fact that it is kind of a semi-musical. I mean, they like to say it's a, a movie with music, but, I mean, they, they break into song. And here it, it's believable because like you know we said mm-hmm. these people are are suffering from mental illness so you know they can close their eyes and just kind of have a song and dance sequence in their head and i, I buy it you know mm-hmm. but at the same time i it took me away um from it and you know i think things in my head while i was watching it like i don't think i've ever seen a singing joker you know <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, i mean not that's a bad thing but it just you know and there are parts where Joaquin's voice was incredible and there are other parts where you're just kind of like, ooh. Um, but I felt like he was doing that on purpose. I mean, the guy yes. can sing. He's, he, he's played Johnny Cash, you know. Um, but like, I don't know. It just, and of course, Lady Gaga seems like an angel and there's musical numbers like the one with the mountain. I mean, it was gospel. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was ready to dance in the aisles. I mean, that was insane. But like- I loved the Sonny Bono, the Cher and Sonny, the yes. Sonny and Cher show what right a number i love that yeah. yeah yeah so i mean like i said there are these moments but overall i i don't think i can recommend it yeah i'm i'm afraid that i can't either um 
I did not really love the first one. Here's the thing about it. Both of these movies is what it is, is I appreciate them. You understand? Todd Phillips has a vision. He had an, has an intent to, you know, basically deconstruct the Joker character in his own way, in this horribly gritty, horribly depressing way, right? Mm -hmm. And I can appreciate that. You know, he didn't veer from that. He doesn't try to show anything else. The music part of this film is is really just continues to be more of a sad situation because it's all in Arthur's head, you know, or whatnot. And maybe even Gaga's head too, or, or Harley Quinn's head. Um, and, you know, they fantasize about this sort of life. And the, the songs they are singing are standard too, which I like. For some reason, original musicals, I mean, they really have to knock it out of the park for me to really love them. But I do love when when songs that we know are sung, you know, in a film differently or in their own variations. So I appreciated I, they've, that. They've actually given that a name now. And I actually, I really like those musicals. They're called jukebox yeah. musicals now. And ah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm down for that. Yeah, that I like. I do like, like Moulin Rouge, all those mm -hmm. kinds of things, you know, mm -hmm. it's because it's not the same song it's a song sung by these characters in the way that they would sing mm -hmm. them so mm -hmm. the both of these i thought i thought joaquin and gaga were amazing in this i mean oh, there's incredible. uh it was just but, but ultimately it's just it was so depressing and so you know morose and 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 he looks so awful and for no for no real purpose in my opinion it kind of felt pointless to me you know i I walked away from the film going, God, that was so depressing, but why? You know, I mean, it didn't have to be, I don't know. It, 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 let's just say whatever intent Todd Phillips decided to do, I didn't like it. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just walked away from it feeling like that was, you know, two hours worth of just feeling completely crappy for no reason, really. I mean, I guess Very it's morose. just to, just to, to you know, like this this character, so so beloved, right? I mean, I mean, he mm -hmm. is probably Joker's probably the the most recognizable and iconic super villain of all time. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. he 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 is a he's a character that has been played many times, and you know, and, and in various forms, and and it's it's you know, it's a beloved character, so. Todd Phillips' idea of, of this is not really, it's not about Joker. It's about Arthur Fleck. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's about Arthur Fleck is what it is. It's not Joker. He, he, it's about him and his mm -hmm. horrible, horrible life. <laughs> mm -hmm. That we learn just, more about. Yeah. It's just a tragic life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think for me, the whole prison stuff was like, come on, you know, it just it, it felt like you know they just kicked him when he's down all the time and he did he was just emaciatedly horrible to watch look at i uh, mm -hmm. i know he he like nearly killed his body to do this why why <laughs> you know so we have cg now come on they can make you look thin <laughs> you don't have to be a method actor but i mean i i guess i guess for him to get into the character i you know, whatever but yeah i liked the courtroom stuff the best so I liked the, the musical parts, you know, the, the, and they fit. They really did. They didn't just come out mm -hmm. of it nowhere. They really fit within the narrative. And I, and I, and I really enjoyed that. And the whole courtroom stuff was just, was also quite good to me, you know, um, especially there's this, uh, you know, people from the first film, like the, uh, the little person that he worked with, mm -hmm. uh, Gary and Zaza Beats, who plays a neighbor, he breaks into her apartment they come back in the courtroom situation, but the conversation he has with the Gary Puddles character oh. is very heartbreaking. Yeah. Heartbreaking. And so well yeah. done. Now that's so the kind well of, that was, see, I, I felt more for Arthur in those moments than I did when he's being, you know, you know, beaten up in, in the, in the jail and all that kind of stuff. Now the way it ended, and, you know, we mm -hmm. are a podcast that does tries not to do too many spoilers, even though this will, be posted after the film has been out so most people will have seen it or a lot of people will have seen it but we still I still don't want to give away but the ending um 
as as sad as it or as you know whatever as it was you know it kind of let to itself that maybe there was another per another situation where a new joker could appear or whatever the case may be but um which i kind of appreciated also the kind of you know in the courtroom when the big final you know thing happens in the courtroom uh you can see the harvey dent who's played by you know, mm. who the actor who plays him but he plays young to harvey dent you see how he might become who he becomes you know you right know he, right anyway those kinds of things i appreciated you know even though this really wasn't a Batman movie in any way or in, in, in the universe, it, it, you know, it kind of, it's a standalone. It's a one-off. Um, there were moments well, they, where that, yeah, brought it back. Go ahead. What? They, they, they don't even say the word Batman once. No, ever. 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 Uh-oh. Even the word Wayne. Like you don't hear that <laughs> name. Yeah. You all. couldn't even mention the fact Wayne, you know, enterprises or something. Well, but, but, um, that's fine. That's fine. You know, you know I get it. Like, I guess this is not what this was about. You know, I, I've read some reviews before I saw it. And, mm-hmm. you know, even some of the bad ones were just like, yeah, well, you know, it, it's sometimes it's really hard to get there. But like that ending is just really, really explosive. And, you know, I'm just sitting there watching it. And then it happens. I'm like, oh, wow, you are yeah. not kidding. <laughs> you are not kidding. And then You're I'm like, okay. Here. I'm like, then, then there, it keeps going. And then that other thing happens. I'm like, oh, wait, which, which ending are you talking about? Because they're both just like, what? Yeah. You know, um, but and, and I'm trying to say this without giving anything away. There's something that's done with a knight or a, a shiv or whatever at the end that goes right back to the comic books about Joker. And so that that made me oh, really think. Oh, I didn't um, know that. I didn't yeah, know that. There's something about okay. it, his, his smile, let's just say. And. Uh, the, it was clearly happening, and I'm just like, hmm. oh, interesting touch. Um, but it's okay. also weird, like, you know, these DC films. Not to make it about something bigger, it's also kind of weird as a as a fan to go in because you you also know that this again. We've asked this question like, why, why, like so much of this movie, like why, right. but like kind of like you're like why, also because like, you go into this movie and you know that James Gunn has already hit reset. Yeah, like so. This has no bearing no, on what's happening no. at DC. Mm-hmm. Not that that matters at all, but it's just it's kind of weird watching the last couple of DC movies because you're just kind of like, why am I sitting here? Because this this is moot, yeah. really, you know. Um, yeah. And maybe that was a miscalculation on their part. You know, they should have just d- well, d- I mean, but kept it under wraps. Maybe, but I think Todd Phillips obviously he had. They gave him the go ahead to sort of mm-hmm. reimagine what he would think of as, yeah. you know, Joker movies and he gave what he gave. So I mean, yeah, they right. they clearly aren't connected at all. Um, right. But well, and, uh and there are other, like little things too, like the the prison, you know, that was pretty wild stuff. Um but like I mean not to nitpick, but kind of little things that I thought were me away from it, like you know, he had to tell a joke to get a cigarette, and he clearly is right. a man who loves his cigarettes. By about halfway through the movie, he's just smoking in the prison, just like you know. I'm like, well, okay, why did they make a big deal before about him getting a, a cigarette? Or when his attorney right. asked him if he, or the psychologist wanted a cigarette, and he grabs it like he hasn't had one in like a year. And I'm just like, well, which is it? You know, and, yeah. and it's a it's a nitpicky thing, but it just kind of, you know, I don't feel like the first movie had moments like that. Like it just it was more cohesive, whether you liked it or not came down yeah. to just whether you liked it or not. There weren't things in the movie that took you away from it. Right. And I, and right. I kind of feel like that, you know, and I, I'm a huge fan of the first movie. I still have the poster on my wall, but like. Yeah, I just didn't know. like it. But, you know, like I said, yeah. it wasn't wasn't for any lack of, of artistic Mm-mm. achievement Mm-mm. in any way. I just didn't particularly enjoy being in that universe. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't entertaining to me because it was just so bleak and. You know, and he, Joaquin's performance really ultimately that while I can just bow down to his, his great talent, it's at the same time, I'm like, I don't ever want to see this person like this again, ever. I just, it's just, ooh. That's why Gaga was like a little bit of a fresh, you know, breath of fresh air in this because she was so appealing. And I just, I find her yeah. very, very appealing. I, oh, I She's yeah. so talented. It's incredible. Yeah. 
how talented yeah. she is. You know, and I never used to be a big Lady Gaga music fan. I never really loved her songs or anything, but I really thought she was pretty out there and, and how she presented herself and all the different costumes and things that she would wear. And that's all, all good. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, wait, she can do a lot more than just that, by the way. Hello. She, you know, she's mm-hmm. like, she can act. She can, you know. So I, I really... I find her, her very appealing, and I thought she her was albums really with good. Tony Bennett, like yeah, is, is this exactly. the same singer that gave us Bad Romance? I mean, wow, they like, talk about rain, <laughs> poker face. <laughs> oh yeah, bop, bop, I bop, mean, bop, bop, bop. yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, and I just, I, I, you can't take your eyes off her when she's no, on the screen, no, and, and that's she's... saying a lot when she's opposite yep. a guy who won an Oscar yep. for this role. Yeah, yeah, and he, uh, he is definitely, they definitely had chemistry together, and, and I, you know, I, uh, I really thought they did a great job, the two of them together. But yeah, ultimately, absolutely. walked away from it, not really loving it, yeah. not really loving it. I mean, I'd yep. give it two and a half stars, to be honest with you. I'm just, yeah. Yeah, I'm just you kind know, of in the I, middle of the road. I came in here, I came in here wanting to do two, but as I've talked about it, I think, I think, yeah, I got to sure. bump it up at the 2.5. Yeah. And I think another thing that helps it too, is I wanted to mention is um, you say what you want about the story and the nitpicking the script, whatever, but the, the cinematography by Lawrence Sher yes. was just like, and I, and I see this as kind of someone who's somewhat new. So I'm just like, this is a yeah. one of these cinematographers that I'm going to write down because I'm like, yeah. you know, like other cinematographers, like you see their name on a, on a film. You're like, okay, I know this is yeah. at least going to look amazing. So, right. uh, Keep your your eyes peeled for anything that has Lawrence Sher's name attached to it as cinematographer. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, just briefly, we can just talk real quick about our favorite jokers, and you know, throughout the years here, I think still for me it's Heath Ledger because yeah. I feel like he 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 brought some of this Arthur Fleckness into his character. Clearly, very disturbed individual, but so menacing and so odd and quirky and you know and just he really brought some depth to it that hadn't really been seen before so you know I feel like he was the nice combination of what a Joker is as far as in the Batman universe and then you know kind of with the with the little hints of his disturbed upbringing and all that kind of stuff so definitely Heath for me how about you Oh, absolutely. Like, I don't even have to think yeah. about it. I mean, that was that was a revolutionary <laughs> performance. I mean, that was basically, it, I mean, he was the first, uh, you know, actor to play any anything in a superhero movie to be like, you know, nominated, much less yeah. win. Win. And, and, yeah. and everyone in that house, like, expected it. Yeah. You know, like, it, it was just so otherworldly. And I love what Joaquin does, and he deserved his Oscar, but I, yes. I actually would like, I, I think that we don't get Joaquin's Joker without Heath's Joker. It's true. It's very true. You know, um, that's a very good point. I, I agree uh, with you completely. I mean, he didn't steal anything. I mean, it's a very no. unique characterization, no. but we don't, we don't even have that opportunity. And again, uh, speaking to this character, I mean, I, I think it's the first time in Oscar history that two different actors have won an yep. Oscar for playing the same character. And it's a comic book villain. I, know. I mean, that's, how you know i would say like even all-time villains just below darth vader we got to put joker oh Um, i mean i'm just what i'm saying this he's so rich as a as a you know i mean i never read the comics but i'm you know i can imagine that you could take off the page what that character could be and then turn it into all kinds of things and that's what those two actors did that you know he's and joaquin you know and you're right it's 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 a you know, it's a it's an amazing character to embody. I'm mm-hmm. sure it's a lot of fun to play. You know, Jack Nicholson oh, yeah. had a blast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite well, literally. The interviews, uh, Tom uh, Todd Phillips says that like the the second they finished shooting on the first one, like it it was actually Joaquin that walked up to him and he's just like, I don't know what we got to do, but I'm not done with this guy. Ah, but and now so, he is. Like, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard well, that. Now he's done. Yeah, he yeah. No, he's done. D O N E. Yeah, he kind of really, yeah, well, yeah. Um, and Todd Phillips was Ooh. like, well, I'm not done either. So, yeah, and um, just really quick before we go, I think they're only about two episodes in, so they haven't missed too much in being at streaming. Speaking of the Batman world in Gotham, um, you guys got to watch Penguin. Penguin. 
Got to watch the Penguin, guys. I it mean, is. it's like it's like if the Sopranos <laughs> went to Gotham. Right. Uh, and and Colin Farrell, you think Joaquin is amazing. I mean, I don't want to say he's better or worse. I don't want to compare. But like Colin Farrell in this suit as the Penguin and the walk. I mean, just give the guy the Emmy. So unrecognizable. But then you can just see a little glimmer of Colin it. in there. Yeah. You hear it, too. And Christy Malati, she is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. Casting. I just, yeah. Really, Casting really love that. Real. Oh, it's amazing. Really good stuff. Yeah. Hi- yeah. Highly recommend it, guys, for sure, for yeah. sure. It's good that I'm glad you yeah. brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. All right. <laughs> well, Joel, I always love talking to you. So um, I'm hoping we can. I'm, I'm going to be doing a little bit of traveling, but I think. I'm not sure if you can, but we might be able to do Saturday night, which uh, actually comes out next week wide about yeah, the I heard it. first airing. Have you seen it? Yeah, I know. I got tickets already. Uh, yeah, excited. I got tickets too. So let's let's plan to do that one for sure next week about right. the beginnings of SNL. I can't wait to watch it. I hear it's really yeah, good. So Me too. Okay, my me friend. Too. Thanks so much. And we'll talk uh-huh. to everyone later. Definitely leave some comments. And subscribe, too, and let us know what you think about the film and who maybe is your favorite Joker as well. So stay tuned. We'll be back. Bye-bye. Right.